like I'm sure you've thought about this. Like, am I sociopathic? Am I psychopathic? Am I a narcissist? Have you like realized that some of these attributes were bad? You're changing your personality. Do you have an answer to that? Yeah. How do we make ourselves more optimistic, more happy? What are the habits, what are the traits of the world's most interesting, most powerful people? Good morning, good morning. We are here in New York City. I'm Jeff Wu, and we're gonna drop knowledge bombs today. We have a stacked schedule, back-to-back -back meetings with some of the most interesting, most powerful, most infamous people in the world. We got Billy from Fire Festival. We got Raul, police officer turned tech entrepreneur. And some of the biggest fintech, finance, banking executives in the entire startup world. It's gonna be a busy day. I'm gonna take you guys through it. We're walking down Crosby Street. We're visiting the Brex HQ in New York City. I want to be meeting with Mike Tannenbaum, who's the Chief Operating Officer for Brex. Hello, we're visiting Brex. Good to see you, Mike. So we're pretending like we're talking. Yeah. We are talking. We are talking. But okay. let's actually talk about something that we want to talk about. Sure. Okay, so we're just two gentlemen of New York. We're men of the people. Yeah, but you're from <laughs> California, aren't you? Yeah. What is your edge? Why are you better than the average CEO, the average CEO out there? Pro probably the thing that I can do really well is knowing when to use 80-20. When is doing 80% of the work gonna get you what you need? Yep. And when do you not need to? I think I'm good at that. And I'm good at, um, I'm a really good writer. I think being a really good writer and communicator can just speed things up really quickly. What traits inspire you? Uh, probably really dreaming really, really big. That's not something naturally that I would necessarily do, but I'm really attracted to that. The other would, would be, uh, you know, creativity. Love a juice. If Jeff's offering. I think the one that I normally would get but I'm not gonna get this time is Joyful Almond, but that okay. might be too caloric for a very fit and trim Jeff Wu. <laughs> I wanna dig on the literature side. I've been, I'm actually reading the Tao Te Ching, which is like the seminal book of Taoism. Oh yeah. I'm curious as you're like yeah, reading I, out literature, like what are you getting out of it? When you're reading a book, you know, some sort of literature, you're kind of getting inside other people's heads. And I think that's, a big piece of my management philosophy is to kind of understand motivations and why people are coming to work, what's their reason for working. You really need to understand why are people here and their motivations, and I think that is one of the big things I get from literature. All right, so cool, well, it was good to see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for coming by. And next time you're here, we'll spend more time, we'll talk more business. Really interesting morning, and now we're on our way to Union Square to visit my friend Eric Lyman, founder CEO of Ramp the fastest growing startup in New York City history. We're gonna learn what it takes to be a billionaire tech founder. Dude. This is the man himself. What's going on? Good to see you, brother. Dude, you too, man. Yeah. I wanna just point out, this is Eric's office, by the way. And if you look at the calendar, I got the most important interview, and he's got a CNBC after me, so. Yeah. <laughs> So one of the themes that I've been trying to uncover is what are the traits that you have that you think is like your edge or your secret? I think a lot of it comes from balance. We try to think really carefully about what is it that we're trying to do, super intentionally. Um, how would I fit in that? But also what complementary skill sets do I need? And I think one of the uh, things that's made the company work really well is you know, the partnership with Kareem. Kareem is a very different person than I am. He grew up in, in Beirut, Lebanon. Yeah. Um, he tends to be thinking about what could go wrong all the time. Um, I tend to be thinking about what can go right. Do you feel like you can like read people well or bring people together, inspire people, like motivate people? I think it's, you know, it's two, it's two things. It's first being genuinely curious about people. I don't think most people really actually are interested in people's stories. like what drives them, what are they about, what matters to them in their, in their life, and really asks. Most people are trying to tell. Part of what helps is actually being interested in people and their story and in their, their life. And I'll, in, in my interviews, I, I tend to go on that and, and ask about like their experiences, why they made decisions they did, what matters to them, and 
over the context, as far as I know you've won life, like what are people about? You won a lot of awards, whether it's like Fast Company, Most Innovative Company, I think yeah. you're just on CNBC, Top Disruptors list. You're very grounded, almost overly humble. Like what is that secret? Where's that approach? Look, one of my heroes is Coach, Coach John Wooden and you know, he famously would say, like, he didn't look at the scoreboard. It, he didn't care if the team uh, won or lost, despite having the, you know, most winningest record at the NCAA. Um, what he cared about um, was, did the team try their best? Dude, this is we're awesome. Gonna get, we're gonna get some virality out of this. I, I hope so, dude. Yo, Raul. Dude, this is an awesome spot. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Can you like reverse engineer it for it's like, hey, I'm gonna be a police officer just so I can be a public safety entrepreneur? Honestly, to be fair, I got into public safety because it's what I wanted to do. It's what I was passionate about. I didn't feel like I had to build a business out of it. That's what I'm saying. You like know? it was a, it was an organic pull. However, I did have a level of technical understanding before I got into it. I had a level of entrepreneurship as I found something I was just by itself passionate about, I was able to understand all of the things that you know I felt like were problems in public safety that might be opportunities. The best entrepreneurs don't see these things as like businesses. They see them as problems. I think the best advice I ever got, which is still the advice that I give everybody else, is always fall in love with a problem, but never fall in love with a solution. And when we solve these problems, we have to do it with data. We have to do it objectively. We have to do it in a way that um, really pushes the needle forward in a way that matters, not just in a way that makes voters feel good. That's what I'm now focused on is force multiplication. What kind of technology can, can multiply these efforts, keep communities safer, maybe even with less in-person intervention with cops in a way that's more de-escalatory, is less potentially intimidating in some ways, um, can result in less deadly force scenarios. Let's talk about the future. Sure. Tell us about Aerodome. Yeah. What is the future of drones, technology, sure. releasing? Right now, a lot of air support is you know, for police and fires conducted through manned vehicles, like helicopters and airplanes. And we have a series of people that you know, die in these, these types of aviation incidents every year. I want to try sending these drones directly from our rooftop, essentially one of the rough rooftops that we had access to, directly to 911 calls to provide some level of overwatch. It was super successful. Uh, and in fact, the most important metric uh, that helped us secure this from a funding standpoint was that we were able to reduce our call volume by almost 20%. Good to see you, man. Best wishes. Thank you. For all of us. Thank you. Hey, Jeff. Hey, welcome. How are you? Good nice to meet you. you. Good to meet you. Good meet you. Just, you know, you just content with me. Hey. Billy's pretty well known as a scam artist. Yeah, he's infamous. And you, you, you're meeting up with him. Yeah, uh, look, he's a convicted felon. He's served four plus years in prison. Uh, I think everyone knows he's across he multiple legal, ethical, moral lines. But part of my personality, and I think part of human society is for forgiveness. So my thinking is, well, he's paid his debt to society in some sense. If you make a mistake, even if it's a massive white collar crime, does that mean that you are destroyed for your entire life? Is there something that we can learn from that experience where you're at the top of the top, parting with you know, celebrities, models, to straight in jail? You good? Yeah, how are you? Good, good. So uh, you know Michael Goldberg, right? Yes. The PR guy, yeah. He's been helping us out. Okay, so, okay, okay, okay. He's okay. a huge fan of yours. I mentioned I've seen you today. He's like, oh, Jeff is awesome. What a small world. From my perspective, it's like, okay, like if you've convicted, admit guilt, serve mm -hmm. time, it's like, if you're earnestly trying to do all of that, mm -hmm. like, do you owe any more? People understand that they've done bad things too, and they are going to judge you based on how you judge yourself. And I just didn't know that. Interesting. Have you, have you like realized that some of these attributes are bad? You're changing your personality. Mm -hmm. Like I'm sure you've thought about this. Like, am I sociopathic? Am I psychopathic? Am I a narcissist? Do you have an answer to that? That means that's like a hard question. Like I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, I'm not this or, or I am this. I think one thing that was interesting about jail though, and I think people who go through extreme experiences, like whether it's war or something else, you often form the best relationships of your life when you are truly up against like a monumental adversary. And 
the relationships aren't transactional, right? It's not about money, it's not about this, it's about like pure like bonding and survival. And I feel like that has a permanent change on anybody's personality. What are human nature exploits or fallacies that you've learned like hacking the system? I think there's two good things to learn and like, you know, one kind of like inspirational thing. One is that if you fail, honestly, no one cares. And you are also not the most important person in the world. I think I was 24 with my company. I'm like, if I fail at this, I am done. And that was so not true. If I failed, honestly, I would guess that a large percentage of those investors would have backed me immediately for the next one, but I lied. And also I think it sounds corny, but like time is just so important. And you know, at 24, there is no rush. And ironically, I'm 31 now, and I feel like I have more time than I feel like I did seven years ago. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Have you guys met? No, I texted you. I know. What's I up, man? You. Yeah, sorry. nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. How are you? Doing well. You just did an interview? I just yeah, bought the saying. place, actually. <laughs> <laughs> bought it from Raul. Yeah, we check our Closing day. <laughs> so I've been on this journey to understand what are the traits the world's most powerful people have in common. So some of the takeaways that I've learned today are really being passionate about the sector, actually getting the nitty gritty details of what makes industry tick. That's super important. Success and financial success is just a side effect of solving people's problems. Another big takeaway is about people. Become the sharpest, edgiest version of yourself and then compliment yourself with amazing, great people that complement your weaknesses and you can take advantage of your strengths. And lastly, all of these people showed relentlessness. I think they were all had visions of what they wanted to achieve and it was pretty clear that they all had setbacks, but they don't give up. They wake up the next morning, the scoreboard sets back to zero, and you get after it day in, day out. So that reminds me, it's fun to do a little bit of content, but I gotta do some real work. Get out of here. <laughs>